Mariam, if you'd like to go ahead. Um, no, it's still buffering. I think it needs be to... Mariam, are you going to... Um, it is recording on my side. So, okay. It's up to you. Has this other record? Yes, it has. Oh, okay. Yes. And everyone, I hope you can all hear me. All right, so welcome guys. Today we're simply going to be going over the um, CV plus 10 academic profile exercise. So because we're almost getting to the end of the training, we are expecting you to by now be able to develop your own CV and also develop your 10 academic profile. So don't be so much of talking from my end. I'm pretty much going to go over um, a sample CV from one of the one of the previous batches graduates, and I will just um simply highlight the things or the sections that should be on your CV pretty much. So I'm about to share my screen. Please let me know when it comes up. Carly's learning, you can see my screen now. Yeah, I can see it. All right, great. <clears throat> so um, first things first, we are trying to, um, essentially you're going to be applying for entry level jobs. So we want to make sure your CV is at least a page. And all the forces to a page. We don't want you to call them unnecessary information. We want you to we want you to pretty much show the things that are required at these job roles or job descriptions or pretty much jobs they're applying for. And at the same time, it should be minimal. It shouldn't have so much um designs or whatnot. So the um the essential sections that should be on your CV includes um the picture, full name, professional summary, contact details, work experience key skills, projects, education, and then any extras that you would love to include. So I'm going to go over them. But before I start, I want to just um, highlight that although from the week zero exercise where everyone had to submit um, their CV, a good number of people had like very nice, neat templates, and you can stick to that if you want as long as it's still showcasing all the necessary information that we want you to display. And if you probably have, if you probably don't have a good template on the get go, in the careers manual, um, there is a folder there, or a driver, 
that has two um, templates that you can download. You have to download a copy for yourself, then edit to suit your details. Or if you prefer um, these online CV makers, which aren't bad, if I say so myself, there is Overleaf, there is Novo Resume, and there is Canva. So these three links are also on the careers manual. You can go to any of them and see which suits your style. But I personally would recommend Novo Resume because Novo Resume has like different templates that even suit the amount of you, the amount of like years of experience you have. So if you're a fresh graduate or someone with just one or two years experience, it has um everything that suits pretty much. So I personally recommend um Novo Resume. You have to just make sure you're online to do it. So you pick a template, you sign in with your Gmail, you pick a template, then you just fix in all the um details, all your information, as long as it's still showing um the required um sections that we ask for. So your picture, we want a very decent looking picture where you should be dressed um business corporate wise, if that makes sense. Not a selfie or not a picture that has a filter. By now, everybody knows what a professional picture should look like. If you you can easily get one yourself, you just have to like stay in front of a solid color, a wall, and get someone to snap you or use your tripod. And if you want something looking very crisp and then standard, you can easily just ask for a professional headshot from a photographer. Your name, which is usually first name first. So if it's me, it's going to be Mariam. Then my last name, which is Musa. Then you can add um, what you're pursuing. So this person is a data engineer. So data engineer, you put data engineer. Uh, machine learning engineer, you put machine learning engineer. Web3 engineer, you put web3 engineer. Now a professional summary, which um, is something you, you may still keep working on because you've submitted one. So we're probably going to give you feedback on it. Just include something there, which is not more than 50 words. So Umbani is only saying a data engineer who takes pride in building and monitoring data processing systems. He is proficient in Python, SQL, and Bash, and other things that he has included. So something that if any recruiter could read, they can already know the things that you are familiar with, you're capable of. They already know that, or if we employ you today, these are the things you're going to be doing for us. So it should be very straightforward. And another thing I love to mention is we cannot afford to make grammatical or even spelling errors in our CV. In other words, people will be like, no one is perfect, but at the same time, you should be able to proofread your own CV, share with someone, share with at least two to three people to check for spelling errors, grammatical errors, and see if everything is just perfect, like 10 over 10. Now, contact details. Here you have your email address, your phone number, we should include your country code. So if I'm from Nigeria, my country code is plus 234. And then you know how the other phone number comes in. Because you know, if someone international is going to dial your number, they won't be able to dial it with just like the normal beginning, like Nigeria is 080. If that makes sense. So include your country code. This person's country code is plus 264. You might want to include your location. So for me, it's like Lagos, Nigeria, this person is from Malawi. You want to also include your LinkedIn profile. We're going to be working on LinkedIn profile afterwards, but still link your um, LinkedIn profile, your GitHub, and then your 10 academic profile, which is what Kara is, Kara is going to cover in a bit. So I also want to state that everything you're including in your contact profile, in your contact details, make sure it's Make sure it links to when necessary. So if someone, if your recruiter or even anybody clicks on LinkedIn, they're automatically directed to your LinkedIn. So make sure it is linked correctly, pretty much. So now let's go to skills. Um, the key skills are pretty much the essential, or let's say the expertise keyword that is very much aligned with your track. So data engineering, based on the career manual, you already know the expertise keyword is supposed to include and you have to pull skills that you know you have developed not things you are yet to develop because if you get to interview level and they ask you a question or you get to assessment level and they ask you a question you don't want to shoot yourself in the leg so you can also include um 
soft skill, but paramountly, your um, technical skills should really show. So like you can see, there's a lot of Python, SQL, um, VPN and stuff like that. And the person has also included communication skills, which is a bad thing, networking and things like that. So um, I would advise at least six to seven. Yeah, if that makes sense. Then work experience. By now, we already know that you're supposed to put it from most recent to least recent. And in, um, knowing that we're trying to make sure this CV is not too busy, please um, exclude things that are probably very old. A work experience, say from 20, well, in 2022, say from 2013, um, thereabouts. Like I, like I mentioned somewhere that nobody really needs to know if you were, say, a clerk or maybe a bartender or someone because it's, it doesn't really help with machine learning or Web3 engineering today, if that makes sense. So you want to make sure you're putting work experience that really aligns with the track you're pursuing and then it is very recent, if that makes sense. So looking at this example again, um, the date, the date should be there, like from when to when, your um, job title, and then where you were working. Then you can include some of your roles there. So make sure your spellings are right, make sure it makes sense, make sure the, um, what's the word? Your description, like your roles there matches the job title. If you're probably an intern somewhere, and the roles that are looking like someone that was like maybe a, Associate, an associate or a, a senior software engineer. You just need to, because it has to be convincing if that makes sense. So just make sure it matches, like there's coherence between whatever you've written there and the job title. Or say you say you were a computer science teacher and then we're seeing something like you're teaching business studies, like it's not matching, it's not making so much sense, that kind of thing. So. This person has like achievements and tax. Let me see if my course, I, I think if you can see my course, so this person has achievements, tax, you can decide to put roles if you want. This person used the template that is editable still. I think this person used novel resume, yeah. So that's that for work experience. Then personal projects. Um, you might decide to list it out if it's like a full. What are they saying now? Uh, you know, for like science projects, like medical sciences projects, the names are usually very long. Like you can say effect of something, something, something on a microorganism is usually, it's usually very long. It might be applicable to you. Too. So you might want to short form it and just say this is what you did. Maybe in three words, put the date, then um, ensure it is linked somewhere where if they click on it, it's pretty much will go to your portfolio or your git or where like they can see the full details of your project so three to four looks good very recent pretty much aligns well with your track so this is where you can include your project also ensure it is clickable like you can link it rather so where they can see more details about it then your education aha which is mostly going to be um undergraduate degree then also, 10 academic training should be on the education because it's a training. You can also include the things like key courses that you did. So if you probably study, okay, let's just use this person as an example. This person has a bachelor in computer systems and security. So the key courses, there were computer networks, operating system, object-oriented programming, Python, then 10 academic to um, following the track you're pursuing, you can also include the things that the, the key courses that you want to highlight pretty much. So the extras could be volunteer roles, languages, interest, or anything you probably think makes sense. At this point, I also love to include that. If you want to include like certifications, you could also include that. Ensure that um, it is, it's not so long. And then the um, certification is recent. And by which I'm not saying it has to be this year or last year. I'm just saying it doesn't have to be something you've done, like say seven years ago, 
and it doesn't really align with what you're pursuing. Because at the same time, we're trying to make sure this CV is very minimal, straightforward. In 10 to 15 seconds glance, the recruiter can say, oh yes, we need this person. This person is what we're looking for. Sometimes you have to put yourself in the shoes of the recruiter that, oh, if I was employing a data engineer, what would I look out for? If I get a CV like this, would I employ the person? So sometimes it's good to also think for the recruiter to see if what you're doing is right. Um, in the careers manual, so we also, um, there's also a checklist of things that you should include in your CV. So when you're done preparing your CV, go through that checklist and just see, okay, yes, this is there, yes, this is there, yes, this is there. Then there is a what not to include in your CV checklist. A lot of people like to play with colors, but I don't think it's that necessary. Try to stay with like the minimal colors. So white, black, gray, blue, all those ones are still calm, appealing. If you're a graphic designer, that's when you can probably, if you're applying for a role of maybe graphic design, that's when you can probably now show skills and be like, oh, I might as well make this CV a graphic poster. So you don't want your, your CV to be distracting and be like, you want your recruiter to look at your CV and they are not looking everywhere and be like, what am I looking for? You want them to be able to see these things sharp and correct. Okay, oh, let's see the skills he has. Oh, I can see it. Let's see um, the work experience he has. Oh, I can see it. Um, let's see the certifications he has. Oh, I can see it. So if you have like maybe if, um, essential conferences that you've attended to, so that you think, oh, this will boost your profile or your CV rather, you can also include that on the certification. Sorry, on that, like extras, like the other things that you want to include, because there will still be space. Um, what else do I want to mention? So I think that's that in terms of CV. This is a very good example for you to look at. Also, um, in the charisma now, they are like, I think five, they are about. CVs that you can also look through to see. It doesn't exactly have to look like this person's own, but there are templates that you can try, or you can use already existing templates as long as it's still showing the essential sections, which is picture, name, professional summary, contact details, key skills, work experience, education, projects, and other extras. That being said, I think Carrie can go on, there will take questions at the end. If there is something I missed out and I remember, I would just pick it up during question or answering. Um, Mariam, just let me know when you can see my screen. We can see it. Yeah, it's coming okay. up. Okay, thank you. So, I'm just going to go over the um, the profile exercise. So the reason why your CV does not have to be super long and detailed is because you have the opportunity to create a profile, which we will be sharing with um, potential employers. So you will have to do this. Um, this will be, this is not a mock profile. This is not a test. This has to be done professionally because this is what will be presented to potential employers. Um, so this is the template that um, you have been provided with. And this falls under section 3.6 of the careers manual. So Firstly, please don't um, edit this template, make a copy of it, and then go through all the sections of what is required in the profile for um, 
in the careers manual. So you will need to have um, an introductory video. Your location is important. When it comes to education, it will be important that potential employers know that you have finished a degree. But if you finish multiple degrees, please put the most relevant and most recent and most important at the top. Um, your email, contact details will have to be a, an important aspect will be your GitHub. This link has to be at the top of your profile. Um, so this profile, the entire profile will complement your CV. Um, Mariam did mention that you should have clickable links in your CV for your projects so that um, recruiters can see the projects that you have completed. But your GitHub will be a major um, stage, I guess, a major stage where you can present what you have done. Your profile should, um, you should in, um, speak about the skills that you have. Um, now, this part is something that I think is important. You should all have already chosen your tracks, the three tracks that we, you know, offer you. So, even if you are skilled in ML engineering, data engineering, and Web3, if you have decided that you are sticking to data engineering, make sure that the skills and expertise that you list is related to data engineering and not all the others even if you are skilled in everything good for you but you need to keep this streamlined you need to keep this to the point because um recruiters go over these things very quickly they it needs to be quick, easy to read. If there is a list of 20 skills of 20 different kinds of expertise, then they most likely won't, you know, go through it. They won't give it an extra chance to look at it. Um, the 50 words you must have been practicing um, your writing your 50 word biography about yourself. Um, for a while now and so that will go there this can't be long i can't stress it enough that neither your profile or your cv can be very long and in depth um so it says a description of key courses descriptions of key projects bullet points it does not have to be long um in-depth descriptions just say i completed this module list the modules and continue work experience the location and dates that you were working at the specific place is important if you we want you to have um listed three months of real work experience if you do not have any work experience we will be helping you to improvise that um, once applications start or so that is not that should not be that much of an issue but we would like you to um, have all that um, at least three real months of work experience so this profile goes hand in hand with your cv so your cv um, you should finish these two assignments at the same time. Um, you can put your projects here. And I think that another thing I can't stress enough is everything needs to remain within your relevant track. If you have completed um, data engineering projects, but you have chosen machine learning, please just stick to machine learning. 
if you get to an interview stage and the recruiter asks you for other experience in other fields that you have done then feel free to go um, go through that and talk about that with them but this is this part has to be streamlined it has to be quick and easy for anyone um, to go through um, especially if you get a non-technical recruiter who only knows keywords and does not know what any of it means if they know keywords they can approve it and send it over to the technical recruiter and you can always go into more exposition with the technical recruiter about what you have done and the experience and where you'd like to go um that is pretty much it from my side this is very self-explanatory the guide to creating this um, the guide to finishing this assignment is in section 3.6 of the careers manual you obviously should have gotten it um there is um, an explanation in the assignment itself with some one or two resources on how to write biographies about yourself and of course mariam and i are available to help you with this but this is pretty simple and it has to be done this is not a case where you cannot hand it in or hand you know or just put it to the side because it's a careers exercise um i understand that some of you might feel that your technical exercises are more important however this will literally be helping you to get a job so and please finish the two exercises together at the same time because they go hand in hand with one another so that is it from me if you have any questions yes Pinyam. okay thank you Kerry and uh, miriam for presenting that uh, so my question is uh, how verifiable should the uh, things we include in the CV must be. That means, uh, well, will we be asked to verify, for example, uh, their uh, you know, le le legitimacy later on? Uh, because uh, there are some things uh, that, uh, for example, in uh, work experience, uh, oh, there are some work experience we have, but uh, regarding verifiability, it might be difficult to provide that. So. Should we include these kinds of work experiences or um, would that be a problem for us later on if we end up asked to, to provide some kind of you know, proof um so just to clarify with these kinds of work experience you don't have an employer an ex-employer who can who you can list as a um reference is that what you mean there isn't someone who can you can't put a phone number or email address in the cv to for someone to call and say that i finished this course and i did this work is that what you mean Binyam? yes something like that um if you've got You've got the 10 Academy experience, right? This training is experience, which we want you to add. Um, I would say that if you don't have any other work experience at all, then you will have to add that. Um, if you don't have any other work experience that can be verified, then add everything, even if it's difficult. I think that we'd have to look at it i mean i think maybe Binyam, you'd have to come to either mariam or i and we'd have to discuss it how you can present it but the thing with work experience is when you step into an entry level role which is what we want you to do they will require you to have some experience and training so i think it's better to add it 
and we can deal with the challenge of how to present it if it's not verifiable easily. Um, we can do it on a trainee by trainee basis, but I think you should add it because you need to, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to, to, to get some kind of legitimacy um, for people to look at your um, CV and think that, okay, this is someone solid that I can hire. Um, so I'm going to say that you should add a binium and then we can kind of discuss it um, on, on Slack or something because it's better than not having any of that experience on there at all. So that's my answer to that. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, may I add another question? Of course. Okay. Uh, yeah, in the, the, do we put uh, the Teen Academy projects as uh, experience uh, or uh, as a project uh, like in separate books? Um, so, are you putting the, the Teen Academy projects that you're doing, is that on your GitHub or something? Are you listing all of those on your GitHub? The 10 Academy projects? I think that yes, this, any projects you've completed at 10 Academy, you need to um, put on your CV and your profile. So with, that would be the non-technical. Um, okay, please go ahead. Yeah, the projects that you've carried out throughout the training should stay on that project, not necessarily work experience. Because <clears throat> as much as um, someone had to, you know, work essentially, you would be supervised or you pretty much be assigned the tax to it without supervision. But with 10 Academy, it was more or less like, let's say, a classwork or an examination we are graded and then we are given comments on. So your project should just stay at project and they shouldn't necessarily be like work experience, if that makes sense. So that's what I wanted to add. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Cool. Are there any other questions? Another thing I would love to add is <clears throat> anything you're including on your TV should be justifiable. Okay, Michael is saying, are we supposed to upload the videos this week on the profile section? Yes, um, that is part of the assignment answer for the profile assignment. So, at can be done with your phone um, and it needs to be like literally less than one minute, I think. Um, shouldn't be longer than two minutes. I think two minutes is too long. So yes, finish it, get it over and done with this week so that you don't have to struggle. Uh, what does the career manual say? I would suggest that you all go to the careers manual and um, check that because it's got the it does not have to be it, it has to be uploaded to YouTube but um, yeah, it's the easiest way for okay, everyone to view it because everyone has access to, to YouTube. Okay, go for it, Mariam. Yeah, before you go, I want to question. Let me do what I was saying before. If lies again, <clears throat> I was saying <clears throat> anything on your seat should be justifiable, and by justifiable, it means by the time you get to interview, sometimes. You think this recruiter don't really stand or anything can really catch their eye. 
and they just be like, oh, you mentioned that you did this, this you did that, that, that. So can you explain more? So pretty much what I'm trying to say is, anything you're including on your CV, make sure it is true. We're not saying people lie. We're not saying you're lying, but like these things happen. Everybody's trying to paint a picture perfect and like make sure they get selected. But at the same time, you want to make sure anything that you put on your CV is true. You can justify it. <clears throat> and there is no while afterwards, like there's no problem. So I think we should just note that. Then also, <clears throat> I also wanted to say that from your week zero um CV exercise, just take your time and like extract the things that pretty much aligns with what we're trying to portray now because we don't want it to be busy. So the essential sections extracted from there, pick the most recent things, reframe the words, make sure they are simplified. There's no like so much essay in terms of maybe the things you want to put, stuff like that. So I think that's what I wanted to say. So I'm only saying if I have no experience on the track I chose, although I had worked especially Or is he saying I have work experience? Um, sorry, I'm trying to scroll up back. Okay, I have work experience on some related types like web apps, apps and websites and IT of such into that. I think you can. If um let's like the background knowledge is necessary, I think you can. But also for the track you don't have like, any experience at all at all. I suggest you start looking out for like volunteer roles or yeah, volunteer roles or maybe any some sort of attachment to any organization or company that you think you can just be like, oh, one month, two months, I really want to, I just like, I want to say like, you really just want to learn a couple of things and just see, get like some hands-on training where you'll be assigned tasks and stuff and then you can include that as work experience. But so far, you can just to include what you have at the moment. Then while we're reviewing, we'll see if it really matches. And I think this goes for other people that probably think, oh, they don't have no experience at all. I think it's it's important for you to start looking out for things that um, you can just learn within a month or two. So you can just include that on your CV. Um, Bini, your answer, or oh, please go ahead. Okay, uh, mm. can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so uh, I was just, uh, I raised my hand to ask, uh, I, I had uh, experience working for uh, a telecom company, Ethio Telecom, but uh, the role uh, I was working in was uh, collecting uh, data. Uh, so does that, can, can that be included in a CV or uh, would that be too far away? If if I hear you correctly, you said you had um, experience with a telecom company organization and then you were collecting data. If you could include that on your CV. Is that what you said, please? Yes, uh, I work for uh, a telecom company, but uh, my role was not uh, data engineering. It was uh, collecting data for the company. Okay, and was it recent? Yes, uh, it was uh, right before I joined the uh, Tena Kada. Okay, I think you can. You should. Then while we review and look at it, if you can explicitly like list out your um um the roles, like things you're supposed to do, your tax, and it matches like. Sometimes you just need to look at it. That does it really like work and in add with what I'm. If I think you're doing, you're pursuing data engineering, if I'm correct. So does it really like align? If that's the case, then carry on. Uh, yes, it's somewhat allies with data engineering uh, in a sense that uh, I worked on data in general, but uh, I wasn't building any pipelines or. Uh, performing any analysis. Of course, I worked on some kind of uh, research uh, analysis, but uh, I, I'm not sure if, is that, if that can be included as a work experience. 
I think you're good to do. You can also do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> All right. So, I don't know if any other person has questions or question rather. So like like the, um I would keep um amaring this like the charisma are literally like explains everything extensively so take your time go through um the carnera manual and like for the CV CV is not something that is perfected in a couple of days you keep adding you keep subtracting you it's it's just the way it works if that makes sense um so take your time and go through this thing. But make sure whatever you're submitting on Saturday is um, reasonable. It checks all the sections they're supposed to include. Same thing for the 10 Academy profile too. So make sure it aligns. And like 10 Academy profile is pretty much like a bigger, what's the word now? It's pretty much a bigger view of everything. So because it just as everything that all your application materials pretty much. And then for certifications, like if you think you probably think your um your CV is looking scanty, you can start like checking. I know everybody has this thing where they like they signed up for courses, but they they don't end up finishing. I think now is a good time to go back and reflect and just think, okay, okay, let me look for two three um, um courses I can take, and I'll get certifications afterwards. Let me include it to the CV. And it doesn't have it has to match. Like it has to make sense that oh. If someone sees that you have the certification in this course or in any mini training, per se, that you can finish in a month or two, you can include that. So if you're looking at this to probably boost your CV and make it look more, make it look rich, like cast flavor, that kind of thing. So Coursera is there, things like that. And for Coursera, you can easily apply for financial aid so you don't pay for the certificates. If you need any, um, what's the word now? If you need help like drafting out um, your essay, I can help with that. I can just give you like a template to follow. You edit. When you submit um application for financial aid on Coursera, it takes like 15 days for it to be approved and it's usually approved. Um, Um, can anyone else yell Mariam? I think she's disconnected. Okay. Um, Mariam, we can't hear you, so maybe there's an issue with your connection. Um, but Mariam is completely right. Now is the time to try and pull up your CV. We can help you with that. We will help you with that because we want you to get jobs. Um, so there are many ways that you can fill up your CV. Um, if you need help, we are here to help. Um, the profile will be the profile that you have to complete. It will be shown to potential employers. So we've got people who come to us to 10 Academy and ask us, are there any, or rather we can show them and say, if you would like to hire anyone in these fields, these are the people that we have. So these are companies. So we are going to show the profile to them. I can't stress it enough that this, this isn't a, um, an assignment that can just be ignored. This is literally part of the job application process. Okay, Mariam, you are back. And we've only got about 10 minutes left of the school. So. Yeah, sorry, my went I, my wife, I went off, so I'll quickly join my phone now. <clears throat> so I don't know if you got some of the things I was saying. I was pretty much just saying like, 
Um, we're probably looking for things to make her CV look more rich and things like that. So I was suggesting looking out for. I'm sure all of us are aware of this, like, but just to re reassure, like, just to reassure us rather that you can start looking out for courses that you want to use to boost your profile and things like that. Yeah, I think that's what I was saying. Okay, cool. If there are no other questions, I can stop the recording and you all can start working on the assignments. So I'll just wait a few, like two minutes for anyone who has questions and then we can uh, wrap up. Okay, I'm going to. Okay, just a little announcement. Tomorrow we have um, what's the word? A mock interview immediately after the stand up. So, the um participants already know themselves. Um, we encourage that everyone attend. Just at least learn. They're not the ones um getting asked questions, but at least you will learn for sure. That I'm very certain. Of. So just to remind us to be there on time. Come with our notepads and jottings if necessary, and all the best to the to the participants. If you need any extra assistance, you can easily reach out to our Kari. Were there anytime? Not anytime. Like were there? <laughs> were there rather? So I think that's that. I don't know if Kari wants to add anything. Uh, no, I'm good. The mock interviews are on the is on the schedule, so yeah, I'll end the recording now. Thanks everyone.